let's talk about something interesting here. Absolutely. We are facing a cataclysm. It's coming. Okay. I want everybody to realize that they have to live in joy every day until then. If you want to wake up, wake up, do it in joy. If you want to make yourself heal, heal yourself, do it in joy. Uh, do it with this express purpose of ascending yourself out of here. Okay. However many days we have before this hits us, you are infinitely going to be aware, more aware every day of your life, and you'll gain more for it than if you just sit there and do nothing. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be able to speak to my guest, Dolly. Am I pronouncing your last name right? Saffron? Yep. Saffron. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And there's so much material to go through. We have a bunch of questions to ask Dolly about her voyages and her experiences. And what I'd like to do first, Dolly, is thank you, of course, for, for being a guest today. I'm, I'm thrilled. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, in, I'm, I'm honored. Thank, thank you. you, dear. Thank you. So what I'd like to do first is just for folks that don't know about your background, your history, just fill us in. Tell folks in a nutshell before we get to the questions who you are, what your life's about, what your past was like. Take as long as you need. Go right ahead. My name is Dolly Safran. I am a fully conscious contactee lifetime. I am also a generational contactee. My father uh, and his family were contactees and my mother's family has some contact as well. Um, I was born uh, with abilities from the get-go. I have an eidetic memory. I remember all the way back until I was probably eight weeks old. Uh, I, have, I developed a psychic abilities right off the get-go. I am uh, able to uh, do a few things that uh, other people can't do right now because of that and uh, hoping that people catch up to this. Uh, I am a uh, full-time experiencer. I, I, when I was growing up, I saw things in compartments because my mom did not want to uh, deal with it at all. Uh, she was just not handling it well. So she tried to make me think I was dreaming all the time or maybe just not okay. And by the time I was 14, I realized that it's real or it's not real. If it's not real, I really need serious help. And if it is real, I need to deal with it. I was at that point where one way or the other, it was I was going forward no matter what. Um, so I had a day where I decided that Anything that happens to me from here on it, I'm going full on eidetic memory. I refuse to let my memories drop, fail, or anything, and I did. Uh, the next contact that I had was a lengthy one and uh, very memorable. Uh, and I woke up, took a few days to get over myself when I did, because a lot. Uh, it took a lot for me to fill in the gaps, you know, uh, to put co in between how I felt about it and what I was experiencing and dealing with on both sides of the issue because I was with ET and I was here at home as well. It's like living two lives. Uh, I tried when I was younger to talk about it with my friends and instantly regretted it. Very first time anybody said anything to me negatively back was the first time I ever said anything and I decided that nope, this is not something I'm going to share anymore with anybody. Um, I kept it completely to myself. On the ET side of it, they were concerned about me getting information and data that would be at crossroads or uh, opposition to what they were teaching me. And so I was uh, it, given parameters, I guess, uh, of things that they wanted me to do and not do. And one of them was they did not want me to experience the media in any way, shape or form when it came to UFOs or anything related to that. Uh, so my life was mostly about learning, you know, English and mathematics and science and technology and things like that uh, on this side of it. And um, on their side of it, they were teaching me all that plus more. Uh, so it, it was uh, a full time for me, both sides. And uh, it's weird that my mom didn't want me to deal with it. And it kind of gave me a buffer, I guess, uh, between the two. 
I wasn't um, completely immersed emotionally on this side of it, human side of it. And uh, that's a good thing because I might not have handled it well otherwise. It gave me a break, a breather between everything that was going on. I was able to assimilate more that way. And when I woke up to it and started putting two and two together, it was not easy, but it was easy. I don't know. It was mentally hard, you know, because there are a lot of things that were happening that, um, you know, you, the light bulb starts popping off and you go, oh, my God, you know, wow. So I had to deal with that, too. I also was given the opportunity, I asked for it, to fly. And that's what I wanted to do. They wanted to know what my goals were and where I wanted to go with my existence and what it interested me. And I plainly told them point blank on that day when I was 14 that I wanted to fly. And they were accepting of it. They said that I had to go through a lot to uh, be cleared to fly. And then the training was long and was I willing to go through that? I mean, they literally sat me down and briefed me on on the, the line of how my life was going to go after that if, if I took this on. It was serious and there was no playing around and you don't just start and walk away. You know, it, they wanted my full 100 percent agreement that I was going to do this and which I did give them once I realized I was going to be accepted to learn to fly. Um, and I've spent my life endeavoring to be a good pilot for them. It took me four years. And uh, once I started flying, I haven't stopped until the last couple of years. And um, I'm here doing this. The reason that I'm here doing this now is I woke up one day and realized that the reason they didn't want me to have anything to do with media here or information here is because we're going through a time period where humanity is not being told the truth about anything. Y'all are being disinformed, misinformed, and gossiped to, to extremes. Uh, there is no real definite foundation for you all to grab onto, scientifically or otherwise, because there are five generations, or well, not five generations, within the last 50, 60 years, all the generations that were up and coming then were denied education to those gains, and only a few got the information that they wanted them to have. We're, we're literally being uh, coached and herded into being in uh, and living the way we do. And humanity doesn't even realize it because you're that. I don't even know if there's a word for it. You're that managed. I guess it's the best way to put it. Humanity is managed and it's hard to explain that and have humanity come back and say, well, maybe you're right or, or get an absolute, um, you're crazy, go away, you're a demon. You know, there's no in between. The reactions are extreme on both sides. Right. And, uh, but I decided that I was going to come in here and uh, try to help out with that, you know, bring truth to the board, you know, because we have a lot coming at us. There's a lot going on in our reality, absolute reality. And uh, I would rather see humankind be prepared for it. You know, I'm part of this question too. Right. And uh, I don't want anybody to uh, not be able to uh, have a clear path to their path. And right now, m most people don't. So that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. First, I want to say I read Preston Dennett's book, um, your partner, Preston Dennett, who's a amazing, amazing human being in and of his own life story. And I read his book, Symmetry, which I highly recommend to people to fully grasp what your life has been like, Dolly. And mm -hmm. from from back from when you were two to, to your earliest memory till today. So I will have the link to that in the description as well as running across the screen. Yeah. Highly recommended. It. it was, once you pick it up, I guarantee you, you will not put the book down. That's how amazing it is. Uh, I've had to read certain parts again and again because it was just incredible. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, secondly, uh, you know, a lot of people will have a lot of questions. I'm going to try to get as much as I can um, into this. So at some point, you decided not to share, as you mentioned, your encounters with the ETs. What changed for you when all of a sudden you said, hey, I, I've got to start memorizing these things, remembering them, 
and and start sharing my story. What what took place during that period? I was very seriously considering what my life really was at that point. When you're 14, the world starts to become open to our the way we think and we start gradually walking into, well, what is it I'm going to be doing with myself? You know, where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? And uh, I had a huge plate of ideas. You know, I wanted to be a marine biologist. I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be an astrophysicist. I wanted to be a geologist. I wanted to be an astrologer. I mean, there's billions of things that I wanted to do. I loved animals. I was already trying to learn animals at that point as well. And um, I loved flying though. Flying has always been at the very base of everything that I am. There are pilots in my family. My father was a, a airborne ranger and he was a glider pilot. Um, I've had a lot to do with that. And my father worked for NASA and I had a lot uh, of um, influence by NASA and space and all that. And plus ET's influence over me. And I just really wanted to jump into that. I wanted to be that. And I didn't really dare to think that it was possible when I was very young. I, it was something that everybody else did and that I could only aspire to. I had heroes actually, you know, I had astronaut heroes, I had ET heroes. I had uh, a real desire to do what they did and no real idea that I could, except to maybe be an airline pilot. And um, right about that age, I was swimming on a team and I hurt my knee really bad and uh, broke my leg. And oh. that, no no pilot training on this side of it. I couldn't go into the Air Force and get jets. That was already a done deal. I was injured to the point that that would never happen. And it broke my heart. It broke my heart. And uh, so I was dealing with all of that. And, and I kept, you know, I hear a lot of contactees say this, and I want to say that it's true. We all go through this where you sit by the window and you pine for home to be with them literally pine because you know you're going with them and you just want to go and um it really was important to me to make sure that this really was really happening you know uh because of my mom and it just became an extreme need in me to figure it out and i was not going to take no for an answer at this point i was going to bloody do it and that's why that came about. That's everything just culminated all at one time at that age. And I had enough. I was done. I was going to be who I wanted to be, you know, know what I knew, that kind of thing. And I wasn't going to listen to anybody else except learn for myself. And that's why. So at the age of two, I think in the book, it says that was your earliest memory. And it also shows um, and, and feel free to show any images you, you have as well, Dolly. And if you don't, I'll add them in during edits. So no worries, whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, but there's a photo of you in your crib with your foot in between the bars. Right. I'm 10 months old there, by the way. That's oh, 10 my, months old. That's my right. first experience. Yeah. Right. Um, they but came to us. get me. They came to get me. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about anything. I was supposed to be napping. And I'm staring around the room, you know, it's broad daylight. It's mid middle afternoon, you know, and uh, I'm looking at the level levelers in the window because my crib faced the windows and they suddenly it was like 10 solar suns were coming through them. Big, bright, white, just right there. And I was fascinated. I mean, who wouldn't be? I was like, wow, wow, what is this? I mean, it had my rapt, undivided attention, but interrupted me when my body started levitating out of my crib, literally levitating out of my crib. And uh, I was not okay with that. And by the time I reached the, you know, the bar, the rails, the top of the rails, uh, I was like, oh no, mm -mm. I was already afraid of falling at that age. You know, you, you learn quickly as a small, small child, don't fall down anything. And I flipped over, <laughs> you know, whoop, and I tried to grab the rails. So it was too late. I couldn't get them. I was trying, going to go back down and uh, oop, my memory went then. That was it. That's the last thing I remember. Um, that stuck with me. It's vivid. I remember it in every single detail to this very day of my life. It, oh my God. But I have a memory sooner than that. I have a memory of being eight weeks old. We were traveling from Georgia to Florida. My mom had a pram for me and the pram came off the 
you know, the wheels, the carriage part, and went into the back seat of the car. And it was sort of like a pram car seat, you know, a baby bed. And we were traveling a long distance. It's a long t- drive from, you know, Columbus, Georgia to Miami. And I have a vivid memory of having holding my foot up in the window and looking at it with the sights going by, just amusing myself. And I realized I had five toes. And I wasn't sure about that. I, I you know, I was like, hmm. My foot didn't look exactly like I thought it ought to look. And I thought that was so weird. And it that stuck with me. You know, I have memory, like photographs. If it affected me emotionally, I remembered it even from that age. And uh, but yeah, the the big one was when I was two and I got 11 or 10 months. And then the second one was um, I got picked up. I was up again, supposed to be napping. We were in Miami and uh, my mom was heavily pregnant with my brother. I was about two and a half. And uh, they came and got me and took me aboard. Well, I only had underwear on. They don't care about what you're wearing. And uh, they took me to a place. We landed behind some store. It was the uh, Utotum on Miller Road in Miami. And uh, back in those days, there was hardly anything built back then where we were out toward the glades. And uh, they said, if you go around to the front, and go in the front door, he'll give you a balloon. Well, I was balloon crazy at that age. I mean, crazy for balloons, big red ones. And I, I was like, okay. So I it got me out and I walked around to the front door and I realized that I couldn't push it open. The door's open. And I started banging on him. Hey, let me in. And uh, the guy saw me and was like looking around, you know, where the hell is her people? And he opened the door and he's looking for people. And he realizes now I'm hysterical by then because Things are not going exactly like I imagined them to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, he picked me up and took me in and he sat me on the counter. Now I'm trying to tell him I want a balloon. And uh, I said it like that too. I couldn't say balloon. I said balloon. And he gave me a lollipop instead. That did not help. <laughs> and he called the police. Well, my mother was already hysterical by then, had called the police herself because I was missing out of a house with locked doors and windows. And uh, they called my dad home. And they put her in a police car and started driving around with the windows open with a bullhorn telling her to call me. They got the phone call. They had an APB out on me, you know, a bolo. And uh, they called the car that she was in and said, come to the, you told them on Miller Road. So she did. By the time she got there, I was majorly hysterical. I mean, freaking out and crying and everything. And um, everybody was trying to get me. The police had already got there before she did. Okay before her police car got there. And uh, they were trying to get me to tell them who I was. Do I know my mommy's name? Do I know my daddy's name? All of that. And uh, I wasn't talking to anybody. I wanted my mother. Mm. And uh, cause I was mad, I didn't get my balloon. Okay. And when she walked in the door, I jumped up and just started screaming. And when she got to me, I grabbed her and held on for my life. And uh, I'm, I'm like shaking. And she said, it's okay. It's okay. You know? And, uh, she said, why are you here? How brought you here? And I could not tell them. I was so mad, hysterical, and freaked out that I just couldn't get it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't, I somehow didn't trust the fact that these people who were all around me were the people I wanted to talk to about it. And um, they separated me from my parents at that point because they weren't sure that my mother didn't have some issue and put me there. You know what I'm saying? They separated us and I became even more hysterical. And when my parents made them understand that, no, this is not happening, you know, who my dad was, you know, my mom is heavily, you know, look at her. She could have done that. Um, Put me back in my parents' custody. They did follow us home and see the house. And uh, they said, whoever did this, you know, if you get any ideas, you know, they were looking for clues, evidence, everything. Uh, They never figured it out. One of the main issues with this case is that I had nothing on my feet and I had no scorch marks, burn marks, cuts, nothing, no sand, gravel, or grit into my feet, nothing. At two and a half, my feet would have been black with road dirt to get of there. And they were pristine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would have been hot, sweaty, bug bitten, you name it. Mm-hmm. And that's a six mile ride from where we were living. Wow. And it never got solved. They never figured it out. Um, my mother apparently had some ideas. So did my dad. They got a police dog after that. And uh, her name was Heidi. She was a retired police dog. And she became my 
bodyguard. <laughs> it didn't do a lot of good because when they came and got me after that, they take Heidi with me. You know, I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, Heidi was good at keeping me out of the lakes. Okay. Cause I love to swim even at that age and she pulled me out, you know, but when they came, she gladly willingly go with them. You know, she stayed with me. That was her job to protect me. So she went with me and she loved them. So what was the purpose of, do you think of that particular event where they took you and just dropped you off and told you you're going to get a red balloon? Like what, what do you think their purpose was in that visit? Make it very clear that I was a contactee to make it very clear that they could, um, that this was a physical event, not an imaginary one, especially for my mother who became more hysterical about it after that. And to make it clear that um, I should be hands off mm. because they, there's no way you can stop ETs from picking people up that they want to pick up. There's no way to stop that unless the person themselves says no. Okay. Um, and that can happen. People have said no and they'll stop completely stop. Um, it's sad to me that um, in my case, they were trying to make that point specifically, but I had an incident after that when I was five and a half or five. My, I was very, very, very psychic. I mean, I could read minds. I could levitate things. I could levitate myself. Um, I was creepy psychic and had ability. Okay. And uh, my dad was trying to figure out who he would take me to, to, uh, test me up for it, you know? And somebody told him that on the base, Homestead Air Force Base, they were having an event. It was private and uh, it was a military thing where they were looking to prove psychic or not. And so he took me there for that, not knowing what he was really walking into. Um, it was an MK5, MK Ultra 5 event. And they were looking for kids who could, who were absolutely psychic and could learn to remote view or could remote view already. And um, they tested me at it first, and I was like stellar. And they asked my dad if they could keep me overnight and wanted to do EEGs and check my physicality, things like that. And they had doctors and nurses there certified, you know, military. And they had a place for me to stay while, along with other kids, and we would be chaperoned. And my dad, unfortunately, said yes. Uh, when I was there two days, three days, they asked if I could stay for a little bit longer, that they were working with us and uh, that I was psychic and blah, blah, blah. Well, a friend of my father's who was a general learned that I was there and told my dad, get her out, get her out. Now you'll never see her again. This is not a good situation. And he handed my father an order to release me from him. And my dad, full uniform, wearing gun, his sidearm, walked in there, handed it over and looked at him and said, get her now, bring her to me front and center, move. And they did. They obeyed him. I mean, you don't say no to an airborne ranger, especially an armed airborne ranger with the general's handwritten order. OK, they brought me out. He picked me up and he turned around and walked out. And he took the order with him. He had it in his hand. He didn't even give it to him. He just walked out with me. Um, never went back. That was a long day for me because I was questioned heavily by my father. What did they do? What happened? Blah, 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 blah. Um, it was nerve wracking. A few years after that, when I was a little bit older, I was about almost nine, between eight and nine years old. I was walking home from school with my friend and some man approached us wearing a suit, a hat and a trench coat. He had a, he had a can, uh, umbrella cane, you know, mm -hmm. wrapped up. And it looked like a cane, but I realized it was an umbrella. And he had a lunchbox. And he started walking like he was going to walk by us. And he said, oh, I love your lunchbox. And he held his out. See, look, we both have lunchboxes. Well, you know, that's a ruse to a child to right. stop. And um, I was taught better than that. And I grabbed my friend by the hand and hauled butt and ran for my life because I knew better. I knew I was about to get grabbed. And her too, unfortunately, and that can't happen. I'm a gazelle. Marine, my friend, was a gazelle. And we ran all the way back home. I dropped her off and kept going until I got home. And when I came flying in the door, I'm yelling at everybody, 
something happened, something happened. And uh, right after that, I found out that A, I was never allowed to go anywhere uh, unescorted again, even to school, back, forth, all of it. We had a private detective or an agent. I'm not sure which one it was uh, with us at all times. And uh, we had new security measures on on our home and around it, all that. Is he a government agent, this guy, do you think? He was a man in black, men in black. That was my first experience with them yeah well they still continue to kind of oh yeah i've been i've been um, watched my whole life um the last uh big incident well there were a couple after that but in different circumstances but i was living in panama city i was uh 2019 uh was after michael hurricane michael and um we just got the house fixed up again because we got peeled like a banana in that storm and uh i have i had a room above the porch underneath me, you know, the back porch. And I had a roof line because the porch had a roof line out my window. And I get this wake up from my my craft, you know, Talara, get up <laughs> now. <laughs> There's somebody outside your window, back away from the window. And I peeked and I saw a man all in black with gear, you know, ops gear. And uh, I backed up to my door, opened my door and went out the door and cracked it. And I was looking in. He knocked him off the roof with an energy blast. Uh, he hit the ground. Their their car, which was always following me, always watching me, stationed there. There's a picture, a picture of that in the back of the book. Yeah. Uh, was he impeded at that point? He impeded. And it caught fire. And they were all jumping out. <laughs> and I was like... Um, we're going to leave now. And I'm like, oh, I want to watch this. And I got a kid in the house. You know, my daughter, it was my daughter's house. And I said, I'm not leaving here. And he's like, well, stay away from the windows. It's going to get bad out there. And sure enough, the uh, CIA showed up with a, you know, one of those big long bed trailers that they pick cars up on. And once the fire was out, they had taped off the area and everything. And they got it out of there and Tawada made sure that they understood he sent them some sort of a message over their radio system that this was the last time they were ever coming near me again, or there would be extreme circumstances. And they gave me wide berth after that, but I always know they're there. I see them. It happens. Um, They're just not on top of me like that anymore. Uh, When I went, I met Preston in uh, 2021. I'd known him for seven years before that. Okay. Talking on the phone, emailing stuff, but I met him at, in Laughlin at uh, uh, right over the bridge from Laughlin in Bullshead City, I got an Airbnb to come to this, you know, comp, you know, mega comp. And uh, he was driving because I had to fly in from Panama City. And uh, Talata followed me in the air all the way to Panama City. He was sighted, by the way. Uh, they had him on the news and everything, you know, big sighting, blah, 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 blah. We went back to get the footage for it and it's gone. It, it disappeared. No kidding. Yeah. Tell yeah. folks about, yeah. is it Talara? Am I pronouncing Talara. it? Yeah, I say Talara, but I have a weird accent, so it comes out that way, but it's T-L-E-R-A. Right. And, uh, so tell, tell folks, I mean, you go into great detail in the book, but tell folks about Talara. He is a, a fifth dimensional entity. He's non-corporeal. He has no physical body like we do, blood and guts. Uh, he he's, um, exists in the fifth dimension. All the uh, ET craft that come all over the universe come from the fifth dimension there built there and then dwelt there. And these beings come and help the ET that are in the third dimension, different ethnicities of them from all around work together, taught them their technology when they were ready for it. And so they fly them. Uh, It takes a lot to uh, be in a craft like that. And the third dimensional, well, how do I want to put this? Third dimensional capabilities are not those. You can't, these craft are way beyond that. They use light technology. They use psychic ability. Um, it's extreme technology. And uh, you just can't develop that in the third dimension. It has to come from there. So Talata is the entity that indwells the craft that I fly. It's his craft. And I'm not the only pilot. There are three others. There are four of us all together because we can't be on board 24-7. This is impossible. I would, you know, die of exhaustion. I still have to live my life here. So therefore, and um, he is uh, my, he has become my guardian. In other words, he watches over me. I'm, a, I'm important to him. I'm important to the craft and what they do and my position or working for them. And uh, so I'm 
guarded by them and uh, watched over, healed it when I need healing, things like that. Um, he has been in, in existence longer than you could possibly imagine. He is extremely wise. Um, I used to call him the Oracle because <laughs> there's nothing he doesn't know in my estimation from what I know. I mean, he's like, you would almost consider him like God. Okay. But he's not, uh, I've learned a lot from him. I also have another who is from the third dimension like we are, and she's a tall gray and I call her mama. She started working with me when I was a very small child, baby even, and uh, she is my liais liaison. Okay. She has coordinated uh, everything that happened to me, education and everything and stayed with me when I was with them. She was my mom there. Um, I am actually related to her somewhat. And I have some of her DNA. I also have the DNA of another who's uh, what you would consider like Nordic tall white. Mm -hmm. And um, because I'm hybrid, I'm hybridized. Um, uh, my family genes, my genetic history has been followed by them. And they've been working with our family lines for a long time. And so I've got a lot of genetics that most people, you know, recent that most people here aren't working with right now. You there are have, a lot of hybrids here, though. You've had your... Yeah genealogy done like they just watch who much yeah it's like this person's going to marry that person and that and they're going to have children blah 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 blah. it's like, so like you know if you, if you if you have farm okay and you have cows and you're breeding them to build the best traits in them because you want the best milk or the best meat right um that's how genetics work okay we can we can build our traits genetically we can also heal genetic um, anomalies in ourselves from generation to generation, not with in intervention, but ourselves, we're capable of doing that. And uh, so that's how it's all been done. My father's mother and father were, had, had um, how do I explain this? Some of my relatives are full on ET hybrids come here in my genetic lines. And so it got interbred with us, especially mama's lines and then the tall white. And it comes in through my Nordic blood. I have, you know, a negative blood. I have Basque blood. I have, I have a lot of ethnicities from this planet, serious ton of them. And it's been a long time. I mean, I go back to the original four. I'm also Ashkenazi, Jewish on both sides. I'm also, I have um, Nate, um, African blood, black African blood. Um, you know, most people don't realize that there's a whole bunch of ethnicities in Africa and not all Africans are black. You know, that drives me crazy uh, when I say, well, I'm African-American. What does that mean? Where from Africa are you? East Bantu, West Bantu, uh, Zulu, what? South African, who are you? Egyptian, take your pick. And they just all clump themselves into one thing just because they have dark skin. And that's somebody telling them they had to do that. That's not real, not true because your race is the same as mine. Everybody has the same race, we're all human. We're homo sapiens sapiens on this planet. We can look different because our ethnicities or our genetic makeups vary, okay? Yeah, I think we've been fed a pack of lies about all that. Yes, stuff. you have, a lot yeah. of lies, yep. <laughs> so you say that these crafts are living entities in and of themselves, right? Right, it's, it's a craft that's built biologically it has a biological like we have a body our bodies are biological its body is biological as well it's not born but it's created biological wow. and then the entity themselves indwell it like we indwell this body at conception they are indwelling that and it's it's their doorway into here because you can't just leave you just can't they don't have the ability to leave the fifth dimension and come here without some sort of vehicle okay and it has to be living for them to get in and that's what they did. So do these beings travel through, uh, is it is it like time travel? Is it like wormhole travel? Like how do they, yeah. wormholes, how do they get here? Wormholes are a theory that is not true. It is not even provable. Um, I want everybody to understand the difference between a theory and a fact. Most of the things that you hear are theories, not cold, hard facts not empirical data at all. And wormholes is at the top of my list. No such thing. They, you wouldn't be able to survive it anyway. If, you, if, if right. such a thing existed, the, 
the energy from it would eat your flesh right off your bones and then eat your bones. There's no way you would survive that. None. Zero. Everything is light, even in the third dimension. All particles, protons, are light particles. And at the center of every proton is the actual light that is the light. And it's intelligent. It has its own ability to remember things, know things. It's quite interesting how they operate. And in the third dimension, we don't see the fact that we're pure light because our particles are so densely packed together because of the gravity that we're in that we can't see that. Not physically see it anyway, um, because our brain and our eyes don't have that capability. Right. Now we have a psychic ability where we can perceive it, but you've been hurt to the point that you can't use your abilities the way you want to or should. And uh, a lot of a lot of it has to do with um, the chemicals that are in our environment. Yeah. So, so you're talking about like our pineal gland and yes, how pineal. it's been pineal gland, yeah. how it's been calcified. Yeah. Things like fluoridation and right. chemicals and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. So that's all yeah. legit stuff. I can sleep. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Everybody's a little bit psychic. I mean, they still work whether they're gummed up or not. You have intuition. You have moments of intuition and inspiration ability, but it's not cohesive. It's not continuous. Like, I'm breathing. I know I'm breathing and I can right. walk. Okay. Your, your ability should be operable to you in the same way. It is your sixth sense, you know, and it operates at a much higher level. Uh, you have, um, it transmits, it receives signal. Uh, every human being has uh, their own mind, your physical mind and your consciousness. Your physical mind takes on the frequency of your consciousness from conception forward because you're Consciousness is programming your body as it's developing in womb. It is in control of that, actually. And your DNA is charging or building up according to what your consciousness is building within your mother. Okay, that's where people think God comes from. And in a weird kind of way, yes, but not really, because your consciousness is capable of building that. Every human being is built according to the consciousness that indwells the body at conception. OK, it's also communicating with your consciousness. That's why really small children are psychic as all. Yes. Yeah. OK, and say things to you and just look at me and go, ha, you know, <laughs> uh, it's amazing. And then from the environment to being told they're crazy or don't do that, not allowed, blah, 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 right. or fear boasting or religion training makes them stop. They give it up. Right. You know? If, you, if you're told when you're a baby, you'll never walk and put in a wheelchair, you'll never try. That's so clear. And in, in the book, Symmetry, you talk about this paradigm shift that we're going through. I mean, I think it's kind of obvious to a lot of people. If you just go on social media, there's so many people saying, time doesn't feel real right now. Um, there's so many, I think people are trying to verbalize it and they can't find the the correct way. Right. Well, you've been given that. a terminology to explain things to yourselves that's dead wrong, first right. of all. Okay, when when people say paradigm, uh, they're thinking matrixy or something like right. that. No, that's not what a paradigm means. A paradigm is a set of circumstances that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. Okay, mathematically, you'd be in brackets. Okay, and everything in those brackets is what you're living right now, mathematically. That's a paradigm. Okay. Uh, there's no such thing as a paradigm shift. Your paradigm is in that you're in the third dimension. This is hardwired reality that you're living in. Reality is real. You can be injured by it. You can be killed by it. You can be suffer from it. It is a place where you've come to learn in the hard reality to gain wisdom and use your abilities so that you evolve. One of the things that's misused in terminology, and I hear it all the time, is crazy. There's two of them that get to me. One is density. All right. uh, nope. Nope. Water is uh, not dense until you put something in it to muck it up. Okay? That's density. Water can become very dense with particles and all kinds of stuff. That's what density is when you're describing a density. When you're talking about uh, dimensional space, that has nothing to do with density at all. Gravity or gravitation is not dense as well. It's electric. It's light. Okay. And there's no such thing as density in that. I want you to erase it for the rest of your life. Somebody's told you a lie. It is not true. Quit thinking it. It's not true. It is a theory, again, 
that is not provable. And if you sit and think about science and you start learning about science and you learn the reality of what this is, this is it, a dimensional space. You're in a dimensional space right now. You're living in the third dimension and you perceive things in a certain way right. because you're genetically oriented to do that. Your eyesight, your thinking, your hearing, your smell, touch, taste, and everything is third dimensional. Okay. You're living that, but your mind is got consciousness and it's able to see mathematically past that in a way that it shows you that in this space, there are other, there, there are actual 12 dimensional spaces all together at the same time. You're just not seeing them or perceiving them. You can perceive the first and second dimension because you know, in the first dimension, everything is just flat. It's a flat plane. Right. The second dimension you can understand because it's not only a flat plane, but then now it's got a wall, one-sided wall on it. It can sit up, okay? The third dimension, we have a box and we have the dimensional space inside this box, okay? We also know mat mathematically, we've proven it to ourselves and we can create it on paper and in, in physically in our minds uh, that the space outside this box is there are more spaces on top of us and they show how it's built okay and how the light is bending because gravity changes from dimension to dimension here's where why the first dimension is flat it's because all gravity is pressing straight down right. there's no escape from it you're flat in the second dimension gravity changes a little bit because the light changes with it and you're able to stand up but you're not you're not uh, holding on to that too good because you'll keep falling back down to the first one unless you develop the muscles and the tenues and everything to stand up in that dimension. Whether you're wholly like this, not possible. You're almost like a shadow figure in the second dimension. In the third dimension, now we're popping out. We're corporeal. We've built these constructed bodies that we can indwell to be here. That's where we're at now. This is cold, hard reality, and you're only here as long as you stay safe enough or healthy enough to be here. Right. or somebody doesn't kill you. That's reality. A lot of people are unaware of how cold reality can be because they just have lived such boxed up, mind-bended, mm -hmm. inward lives that they don't see that if you hit somebody and he weighs 500 pounds and you're 200 or even you're 50 pounds and he's 100, he's going to smash you and you won't live through that, Okay. They don't conceive of that. We have a lot of people who just don't do that because they're too busy playing games where people, imaginary people are getting killed and they're right, still a right. they play again. And they think they're in a matrix. No, they're not. These are lies that are being shown to you to make you think that it's not true. Because when you walk out your door into hard reality, you can still get hit by a bus and die. Oh, gosh. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think a lot of it is uh, we're still so emotionally based so a lot of what we do is based on how we feel. So they're right. not thinking. That's incorrect thinking. It's thinking. Right. Thinking. Exactly. Okay. Right. We have a lot of people who can't handle reality to the point that they need a safe space. Right. Or they need you to believe what they believe. Okay. And it will fight you for it. Okay. My beliefs are more important than reality. And you must be in my beliefs. Uh, no, that's not how this works. Okay. It is what it is. Okay, fourth dimension. There's less gravity in the fourth dimension. And people talk about guardian angels and stuff and seeing things. These are individuals who are living in the same space with you. You just can't perceive that they're there, but they can see you because they have that ability. They can see all the way into the middle. Like in the third dimension, we can see all the way down to the first dimension. They see it too. And uh, they will intervene in our lives given uh, uh, circumstances and choice whether to do that or not. And people say, I have a guardian angel, something happened and out of nowhere, this showed up and now it's gone. You bet that's a fourth dimensional being who knows you, lives with you and cares about you. And it's just trying to save your life because you're too stupid not to, okay? That's what that is. Um, we have developed mind bending philosophies and beliefs, religions, superstitions, mythology, that um, it tries to explain all this stuff without hardcore reality or data facts, scientific factual thinking. And that's where human beings are right now. Uh, I would say at least 70% of the people on this planet, and that's a high number I know, but at least 70% on this pan planet are self-deluded into these uh, beliefs. I agree. Okay. And we need to stop. You need to stop. 
You need to wake up because you're deluded. That means you're dreaming. You're dreaming wide awake. Stop it. Uh, because reality is about to come crashing in on you, whether you like it or not. That's where we are right now. We're at a 12,000 year shift. It has come to that and it's imminent. And I'm telling you that the shadow governments on this planet know this, have known it for quite some time and uh, are banking on your stupidity because you will be removed before it happens so that they don't have anybody to fight while they're trying to survive. And it's only 1% of the population on this planet. There are 8.4 billion people here. They've already close, close to 700,000 people in the last 10 years alone. That's a high number. But if you start calculating back how many people have passed away or suddenly dropped off on this planet and why, it's astronomically high. Yeah. And it's being done in a myriad of different ways so that you don't lock into it because you're so being inundated by crazy stuff, false misdirection. Oh, look over here. Don't look over here. You know, smoke and mirrors, right. uh, lying that you don't have time to gather yourself enough to like put it all on a plane in front of you and go, Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. But even still our population, like I think people tend to forget that there's over 8 billion people on the planet. 8.4. Yes. 8.4. And each one of them is equally as important and essential as you right. are. We're the same. That's right. We're all yeah. equal. We're all one. All Google. the freaking same. And now, we're supposed to be in touch with one another, mentally in touch. We should be able to be psychic and to absolutely. hear each other. Thinking. The empathy goes up. Right now, we've been taught not to be empathetic, to hate, right. to be divisive. Okay. And when you've got that working against you, it's yeah. really hard to think that this person is as worthy as you. Oh, and, and that's that's you. like the big problem we're having right now is everybody oh. thinks they're right. Because- they're right, and you're wrong. And I've had news for the people in this country. I want you to understand something. It's all over the world right now. What's happening here is happening in every single country Everywhere. across the globe. Here's the big clue. The government is not your friend. Right. They're not anybody's friend. Nowhere at no time. There's no way to save yourself now, or there's no political party that's right and no political party's that wrong. Everybody is on their hit list, and they don't care who you are. And this is a giant drama that they're dragging you through to make you reactive the way they want you to react. Stop. Why Back does it, right? Why why do you think our population continues to grow? I mean, yeah, um, we, we lose it, millions. It actually people. isn't. You're being told that too. That's a flat out flat Is lie. it? Tell yeah. us about that. Women What's aren't happening? having babies. Men aren't producing enough sperm to have babies. It are, we are in decline. We're in decline all over the world. We have, we have hell, I, I know of at least two. I got friends who are still nursing, okay? And they had a girl come You're in. a nurse. Tell folks, you're yeah, an actual nurse. nurse. Yeah, yeah. Had a girl come into the ER because uh, something was wrong. She was pregnant. And uh, they found out that she took the morning after pill at least eight times in the last three months. Oh, good Lord. And somehow got pregnant anyway. And she was 14 years old. Oh. Yeah, this stuff is available <laughs> over the counter at will. Okay, right. there are a lot of things going on. And and they've started a war over it because they don't want... They want there are women in this country who feel that it's their right to do whatever the hell they want to your body. Mm-hmm. I got news for you. You're not the one making that decision. They are. They have not only taught you, to, they're making you proud of it. Okay. That's not healthy thinking. Right. That's stinking thinking. Yeah. You should be having babies before you're old enough to have babies either. Right. And they've taught indiscriminate sex. They've taught all kinds of bad, bad things. And uh, it's not healthy. When I say bad, I mean unhealthy for us. This is not how we should be conducting ourselves as human beings, not at all. And uh, there's more to life than what's going on now. When all you can think about is how you're going to, are you going to have as much sex as you want because you get any time. That's seriously messed up thinking. You're not learning anything. You're doing damage to yourself. It's definitely twisted. It's twisted thinking. But why do you think that, um, so if you look back even 10 years ago, Mm -hmm our population continues to grow. It may be at a slower rate now. Maybe it is slowing down big time. But what do you think the purpose is of all these souls? I always think about that, like there's so many billions of us 
Do we each have individual purpose and do yeah. we contribute? Yeah, we're all autonomous beings. You, you gotta remember, we live in a big universe and there's 12 dimensions worth, okay? Uh, there are more of us than you know, way more. I mean, it's infinite and it doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on and on. on so what dimension are the ETs on? Are they fifth dimensional? Like where do they sit? Some of them are third dimensional like we are. A great number of them are actually. And then they're fifth dimensional. Some are fifth dimensional and some are actually sixth dimensional. After that, we're not really being bothered by anybody above that dimension. Okay. N not bothered, dealt with. Okay. Uh, they're moving on to different things. All right. But yeah, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, we're all being definitely guided and worked with universe wide. And if you think nine, eight point four billion is a lot of people, I got news for you. It's nothing. It's in the water. Nothing. Okay. Um, we are all part of an immense existence and we're all connected. We're all in source together. ET or us, we are them. We're all one, all of us dimensionally all the way through. Um, ET believes in what uh, it refers to as all mind. They don't use the word God because God to us is somebody with a big stick that if you don't believe and do what it says, you're going right. to hell. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Doesn't work We're that all way. autonomous beings. They believe all mind is who we are part of. We're in it all together. We're in communication with it at all times. And that uh, we were given this opportunity to do and reach emotional maturity in every aspect and intelligence and wisdom. And as we ascend up through the dimensions, we eventually uh, have the uh, day, hopefully all of us, to be on the same level as the all mind. And then after that, I don't know. Um, what happens after that? I can con I have conjecture over it. I have no real theory about it because I'm I, I don't think it's right for me to theorize openly or not about something that I do not understand yet. Not even this much what could happen, but it's that's where we're headed. Uh, we spend a lot of time on this planet playing around and doing stupid things. We're encouraged to by the people that want to rule us. Um, we are slaves on this planet, big time. Everybody's a slave on this planet. Okay. Yeah. And nobody's better than anybody else. We're all in this boat together because we're slaves here because we've allowed that to happen. Once we started losing our, our innate abilities, uh, we were throwing over to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I can say no to anything. I'm an autonomous being. And if I see myself being poisoned or you trying to poison me, I will tell you no. And you will regret it if you try again. Okay. I will walk away from you and give you space, but I'm not playing that. I'm not going to be in that. I refuse. Um, I have my own life, my own mind, and my own intelligence, and I'm going to learn as much as I can learn so I can get off this plane of existence because oh. I want out of the third dimension really bad. From I'm your done. Okay? Yeah. A lot of people are ready for that, but I'm telling you it's work to do that. You can't just say, I'm going to phase into the next thing. That's not how it works. It doesn't learn. work that way. No. Everything is work. Everything. You have to work hard for it. And playing is not going to help you. Not going to help you. And living in delusion is absolutely going to stop you from attaining that. So wake up. That's what the ETs want you to do. They want you to reach out for them. They want you to be on their level. They want you to learn. And they have three sayings. One is learn all that is learnable and then proceed. Or know all that is knowable and then proceed. And you must accept responsibility for who you are, your own actions, your own perceptions, all of it, and seek truth, period. And that we are all one, and that's it. That's what they want us to be doing. And I don't see that happening really well, not at all. And that's one of the reasons I'm talking about it. It's time for everybody to wake up. I am not a guru. I am not a religious person. Right. I am not a spiritual leader of any kind like that. But I will tell you common sense. I will tell you the truth. And the truth is, is that anger... Hate, yes. fear, avarice, you know, uh, the green-eyed monster, you know, all of that are working against you and you have to get rid of that. You have to heal your own DNA of that because if you're an angry person, your DNA is charging you to be angry. If you've turned it into that, you have to stop it. And that means serious inner work on everybody's own right. level. How Gosh, to do that's that. so true, Dolly, because... Yep. If you think about how you start your day, if you start your day with anger, right. it turns into this like 
ballooning day full of every event that's angry. It's like you almost make it, you, you make it happen. You, do, you perpetuate it. But if you start your day with loving thoughts about gratitude and, you know, just thinking about other people during the course, you, the whole day changes. So right. you're exactly- Your physical mind, Our physical minds have been created, are trained, are a certain way, like a computer. You know, all, all computer people say garbage right. in, garbage out, okay? Right, right. And uh, it's habitual. The computer only knows to do what it's told to do habitually over and over and over and over again. Right. Our physical Program. mind is the same way. It's programmed. And your consciousness is capable of programming it when it can connect, okay? That's the problem. If your pineal gland is not fully operational and working and your consciousness isn't overriding the habituality of your physical mind, you're locked inside your head and can't get out. Okay. You're in an infinite loop and it's really hard to break that. And you can, if you can't, if you become aware, even in your own physical mind, you're capable of understanding, becoming aware and rewriting that program. To right. Stop. Okay. That's what they mean to heal, heal your pineal gland, heal your body, heal yourself so that you can make the right connections and then turn your mind over in the way that you want it to go. Not the way that it's habitually reacting right. you know, when you're addicted to something, it's really hard to break that addiction and there are ways to do it. Well, there's ways to break hate. There's ways to break crazy thinking, stinking thinking. I've seen people do it. I've seen people. Yeah, sure. Overcome. Let me ask you a question. I don't know how true this is. It could be fake news, but I had heard from or read, I forget. But if you tap your pineal gland and you keep tapping it and, and have the thought of like uncalcifying it and, and, you know, generating it, does that work or is that baloney? No, no, that's baloney. Doesn't work. That's magic. You can't tap you can't uncalcify your pineal gland. It's buried deep in your head near your pituitary gland. It's a gland, like your like your thyroid. It's a gland. And so how do we activate it? Gland. How do we you by know. using it? It's so electric. Use it. Okay, gotcha. You can send signal to it, and the signal will help. But you have to stop eating fluoride. Don't drink it in the water. Don't put it on your body. Water on your body that's fluoridated because it, you absorb it into your body. You know how all difficult that stuff. is to do for humans to do that. Sure. You have to get a big badass filter. Oh, that's fine. And, you could. You could. Okay, I'll try not to. No, and, no. Uh, you could say and what filter you your water or go live somewhere. You got a well and you have fresh water to drink. Yeah. Okay. Period. And uh, you have to be careful because your neighbor might be tanking your well too because they're living above you with right. You know, City it's water so and it's draining so your well field. Yeah, we, we affect everybody, absolutely affect everybody. Um, drinking water out of plastic bottles is kind of not okay I either. Know. You know? I mean, you just have to give up being, but it's so insidious, all the things yes. that they put in place to poison us and put toxins into our body that it's really hard to do. So you have to purify your water, period. Okay, anything you bathe in, it has to be pure. No kidding. Uh, you I have to price of those GMO foods. Processed and that's, foods. that's a big one. That's a yeah. huge one right there. Everybody learn to grow a garden, grow your own food. Yeah, Make grow your own stuff. Yeah. Garden, all of it. I Don't price, take anything from anybody. Yeah. I think it's called an osmosis system where you install it in your, your house and it it's like filters out all the fluoride. The thing was like eight grand. Yeah, just have it installed in your well, home. They do that on purpose. They don't want you to do it, so they make yeah. it too. Yeah. You know, they still want you to buy it, but you know what I'm saying? They're going to make you pay for it. Absolutely. Um, it's it's really a, a corrupt system that we live in designed uh, uh, to pollute us and destroy us. Right. Even okay. with GMOs. That's that's a brilliant example. I yeah. became very GMO aware about two, three years ago. And I will not buy a darn thing that is genetically modified. I will not right. allow it your grocery store. in my you home. Don't buy beets, fresh beets in the grocery store. There's a whole bunch of vegetables that are so GMO'd. You're in trouble already. Don't yeah. buy them. I heard corn. Go to your Go to farmers who are not producing GMO crops. And even organics sometimes have or GMO yeah, stuff. We buy it's all organic, but. As you walk down the aisles of your grocery store, it, it still will tell you if it's a GMO product, you know, genetically modified. Don't buy Absolutely. it. Don't right. it. Yeah. You don't need mayonnaise in the store. You can make your own. Okay. Go to a farmer, buy his eggs, fresh eggs. Yeah, that's got loaded with okay. that. 
what is it called? EDTH or something? The chemical in mayo. I'll have it running across the screen. Yes. I got right. all my friends to stop by and yeah. to buy yeah. Dukes. Make your own yogurt. Go or find a cow somewhere that's milking right. and it's not hurt. You know, they've raised it organically. Right. And right. Right. Milk. Make your own bloody yogurt. Make your own cheese. I mean, learn how to do this stuff. The day is coming where you better know how to do a lot of this stuff anyway. Um, let's talk about something interesting here. Absolutely. We are facing a cataclysm. It's coming. Okay. I want everybody to realize that they have to live in joy every day until then. If you want to wake up, wake up, do it in joy. If you want to make yourself heal, heal yourself. Do it in joy. Uh, do it with this express purpose of ascending yourself out of here. Okay. However many days we have before this hits us, you are infinitely going to be aware, more aware every day of your life, and you'll gain more for it than if you just sit there and do nothing. Okay. We have, to, we have purpose here. We're here to learn. And you came here for this. Nobody came here for no good reason. Y'all knew this was coming. Y'all knew you were going to be in it. And there, here's your lesson. Here's your sign. We're here. Okay. So try to do that for yourself. Try to think positively every day. Turn off the damn news. Quit watching the political stuff. They're going to do what they're going to do, whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter. Quit involving yourself in the hate. Quit thinking everybody's your enemy. They are not. The only enemies we really have is ourselves. Even the idiot shadow governments are who we are as well. And you need to either give them a wide berth or ignore them, give them dead air because they can't operate if you're not listening, period. Okay. They gave up whips and lashes a long time ago. They might go back to that in the near future. Do something for yourself now before that happens because it might. Okay. Uh, we don't live in this skin for eternity. This is not your only body. You will come back again and again and again, wherever it is you're going to go, anywhere in the universe you want to go. This is just a temporary post that you're at until you leave here. There's nothing to fear in that. You're fully conscious. You're fully aware in your consciousness. It remembers everything. It'll remember every lesson you lived here and who you are. You'll know it's you. OK, there's no forgetfulness on the other side. You wake up on the other side completely aware. We also don't experience death the way they try to make you think. OK, um, when you're here and you're in pain, that's because you haven't died. <laughs> pain is painful here. It hurts like hell. But the minute you walk out of your body, that's all gone. It doesn't exist anymore. And most of us leave very quickly when that's coming and we know it. You're out. OK, there's no goofing off. Okay, people who are afraid of death and fight it are the ones that suffer the most. Trust me, they're the ones that suffer the most. If you're aware and you understand what this process is, you gleefully go on, no matter what the circumstances. Uh, it's a good thing in some cases because we're not all going to survive this. They've already planned to do a lot of damage to humanity. I want you to understand that that's what's coming. You can either prepare for it and try to survive it because ET will come back and lift off anybody who's still here after that big CME hits and the polls change back the way that's supposed to, or, or you go, take your pick. So but CME, you're, you're talking coronal mass ejection. So folks, yeah, we're okay. about to have a huge chroma, coronal mass ejection. Our magnetosphere is about 40% down now and we're taking energy on that. We shouldn't. Okay. Because it's down. Our poles have shifted. ET is not here for that reason because they can't fly the magnetic field lines. They're crazy. They're moving around all the time and they crash. They can't do it anymore. They're not going to. They've left. But okay. is that the same thing as ley lines? Yes, when exactly. Okay. Ley, line, ley line is another bad term. Okay. It's electromagnetic field lines that occur because the current coming from the core of the earth is throwing out a field of energy and line and mm -hmm. ribbons. Okay. And they cover the entire earth at different levels in different ways, but they're all the same, but they shift. Polarity can shift in a second less than. Because whatever it comes in contact with next to it, if this is negative and this is positive, this might cancel this one out and it shift back to all being positive. It's very chaotic, okay? Energy is chaotic. And on this planet, it's absolutely chaotic. There are no portals on this planet. You're not walking off on your own. Does not exist. No stargates, it's that's bad. all BS. No, right. that's all BS, all of it. No such thing. ED, ETs travel uh, by dimensional doorways that they create with light. 
and they call them light gates. That's why we're on a show called The Light Gate. I'm trying to impress this on people. It's a light gate. It's not a physical thing that you go through. There's no mechanism that's going to light gate you out of here. There's no mechanism that's going to portal you from here to over there on the planet. It does not exist. Those are absolute impossibilities in this dimension. You can't do it. You don't have the technology. You don't have the ability. And it wouldn't happen anyway because that's not how this works. Okay. Right. When ET travels, they actually become interdimensional and they do that by opening a light gate and they go through it. And it, you know, Einstein saw that time space has to warp or fold for right. you to get from here all the way over to there. And he had, he kind of had the right idea, but just not, not how the mechanism works for it. Um, everything emits a frequency. Okay. Your brain emits a frequency. You think in a frequency that's unique to you. Everybody's frequency is different. By the way, you can't raise or lower your frequency. Not at all. That's no. not how that works. Frequency is a byproduct of energy doing something. Mm -hmm. Like if you slap two rocks together, it'll make a pop, right? That creates a frequency. You hear it. That's a sound. When you're thinking and you're psychic, you're emitting your own frequency that's traveling over to somebody else and you can hear that frequency because we have the ability to transmit and receive and hear the, the frequency line. In the third dimension, it's really uh, sectional. In other words, we can only transmit uh, by radio or whatever on bands of frequency because the band is only as big as the circumference of how much energy can be transmitted to have that band work right. Okay. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, look it up. Yeah. Okay. Try, uh, try to study up on frequency and what it really, really is. You cannot raise your frequency. All you can do is turn the sound up on your individual frequency. That's it. When you have a radio and you tune in on a band, right, for a specific frequency and it's really the sound is low, you turn the volume up so you can hear it, or you turn it down because you don't want to hear it. So they say we have this energy field around us, which I totally believe is true. Yes, you transmit an energy field, yes. Right, and it's like five feet wide or something. No, it fluctuates. It's like, it's, like, it's like our magnetosphere. It fluctuates. It's chaotic. It fluctuates. Okay. Yeah. So when people say to raise your, your vibratory levels, you can't do that, in other words. So even yeah. if you're in a negative space, that doesn't lower your, your frequency? No, it affects you it if like if you're in a negative space, what do you consider negative space? Let's get scientific here. What's negative about it? Okay, I want you to understand what you're talking about. Okay, so right? like I walk into a room, anger, anger, yeah, anger is a negative frequency that you're emitting. And if you walk in a room with 50 angry people, that's going to physically impact you yes, in a way that's negative. But it affects your brain in that you're under attack. You, you become uh, sensitive to it and you actually go into fight or flight. That's an emotional response or a survival response right. that your brain is geared to do. It automatically switches on th certain things for you to make you either fight for your safety yes. or run away. For right. your safety. Take your pick. Okay. You can't, you can't walk into a room with 50 angry, hateful people and shut them all down by altering your frequency. You cannot do that. It does not work. Trust me, it does not work. No ET can do that either. They will leave in a second. If you're that crazy, they won't have anything to do with you. They will leave. And it is because you are that violent at that moment that it is you're uncontrollable. And who wants to play with that? Exactly. And they won't. Okay. I want you to understand that anger can stimulate anger in others. So if you walk into oh, a room, yeah. you have one of three responses, fight, flight, or you become angry too and do stupid, stinking, dumb things. Like try to get hurt because you're going to try to hurt somebody and then a fight's going to ensue and right. you're not that good. Trust me, you're going to get hurt one way or the other. Um, it is amazing to me that human beings don't sit and think that one through. This is common sense. This is physics. Um, every, for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. Absolutely. That's physics. Okay. You cannot affect someone in that way because we're all autonomous beings and we're all going to do what we're going to do. And you can't force somebody to think or do what you think just by merely doing, thinking you're going to do it. No, you can't. ET does not also, and I want to make this apparently clear to everybody, it's misinformation when people are told that ET can control them. No, they cannot. 
No, they cannot. Your fear controls you and nothing else when you're with ET. If you're so afraid, you'll freeze dead in the spot. It's almost like having cataplexy. You'll either fall to the ground in fear or you'll freeze and you won't be able to move. That's fight or flight. If you're in fright, in fear, you're going to freeze right up. Your hippocampus can't take those kind of molecules swarming your brain at that moment. Oh. And they'll either remember it or they won't. You can become catatonic on the spot. Oh, I've seen ghosts do that, yes, right? Don't go, don't go yes. over when they get in yeah. a state of yeah. panic. Humans do it too. In yeah. extreme situations, they do. So you say, well, they made me forget. No, they didn't. You wiped yourself. Uh, That's what, because your fear made your brain go down. Right. That's right. Okay. Brilliant. That's a physical fact. That's how we work. That's how the nature of our essence and our beings. Okay. You're now the only thing that does remember everything is your higher consciousness. And it's well aware of everything that occurs to this body because it's right there with you. And the only way for you to really know the truth about anything is to be fully in con contact with yourself. And if that's messed up, you're in a lot of trouble. You're locked into your brain. People go crazy, insane from not being able to get out of their heads. There are no, people who no. have brain damage to the point where they're locked in and they're totally cracked. You know, they have mental illness in extreme ways. It's so and, sad. Uh, I know. And a lot of us have it and don't even realize we're walking around with it because we've been damaged by things like microwave transmissions, yeah. radio transmissions from your telephone, right? you know, which emits a type of microwave. Um, from the lines over your house, the lines under your house. We're swimming in well, a we're just, it's plethora a, of damaging influence here. Now with 5G everywhere, it's even right. more deadly than... Right. Let me know, ask you this. All right. Because I, I think it's important for folks to kind of be aware. Um, there's so many... Uh, I'm going to use the word like gurus out there. Like Bashir, I'll give you an example. I, I, I'm sure you know who he is. And I see so many people sharing their, you know, because what they say makes a lot of sense when you listen to it. It's all loving and peaceful and it's full of like positive psychological influences. Are these people legit? What, you yeah, know, they claim to be. To no, be no, they're self-interested in their, they, it's all ego. I want to tell you something. I, I'm going to give you an example of why you need to think this one through. I don't say anything to anybody that I don't want you to prove me wrong. In other words, if you don't believe me, don't believe me. Go look it up. If I say something to you and it's researchable, go research it. Because you're not going to learn from me until you teach yourself Absolutely. what I say is true. There's no such thing as belief being knowable. Okay? you Because you're always questioning when you have belief, am I right or am I wrong? But knowing is you doing the homework and looking it up and prof profoundly proving it right or wrong to yourself. Then you've heard what I've said, but now you've taught yourself the truth and you've learned it, hardcore learned it across the board. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, all right, here's one for you. Uh, Mars is not inhabitable. It will never be inhabitable. For them to go there and tell you that they're going to terraform is insane. It is a lie, absolute lie. Mars is a dead core planet. Its core is totally dead. It cannot be reignited. It's been damaged to the point that it's been outgassing. Mars is not the same size that it was. It was a bigger planet and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller because it's outgassing. All planets have a layer of water on the inside of their mantles, okay? Right. And outgassing is the that water heating up and evaporating out. Right. That's why Mars still has some snow at one pole or the other at times or on the ground, you they see a layer of dew. Right. That's because of how gassing. Yeah. It doesn't last, because once it hits the surface, it's burned off. Yeah, right, yeah. It has no magnetosphere. It has nothing to protect it from full on, full force gamma radiation hitting it at Mach 20,000 to the 20,000th degree plus one. It is a dead planet. It will never be safe. You think you Elon would that. know that? I mean. You have to have science knowledge for that. And you need to go look that up. Okay, because it's true. And for anybody to tell you that they're going to go there because they think that they're going to make ha habits and no, they're not going to lie to you. They have an agenda and they want your money for something and it ain't that because you will never go to Mars. You will die before you get there. And if you did manage to get there, you wouldn't last five minutes, period. And anybody to tell you that they can construct something to protect you is not true because gamma radiation permeates through everything. Everything. Nothing is safe from gamma radiation. It goes through planets, 
sun, you name it. It's all over the place. It is deadly, dangerous radiation, and we are not fit to handle it, period. That's why we're only alive here because we have a magnetosphere that's protecting us. Right. And while our magnetosphere is 40% down, you're taking loads of gamma radiation and that's affecting us now. ET has known this for some time. They've been trying to work with us. It's difficult. We have autoimmune disorders. We have heart problems. We have mental disorders. We have, I mean, diseases, cancers. Oh my God. That's In the last 100 years, it's blown up. That's because our DNA is being damaged by gamma radiation hitting right. us in tons and tons of amounts. And y'all are not aware of it. That's sad to me. Look it up. All right. Now I want to take this one step further with you. Mm -hmm. A guru, somebody telling you it's this way and telling you, you must believe them because they're the authority. I would run from them in a new yeah. second. They're look channeling, at them and say, really? channeling entities from a That's process. Gossip. That's gossip or mental illness coming through to you. Do not listen to them. Don't listen to me. Go and verify what I say. I'm not kidding you. Everything that I tell you is verifiable. One way or the other, you're going to figure it out. But if you believe in me without verification, I would rather you stop listening to me. Yeah. Just go. Look it up yourself. I'm a, I am try to teach. I am not a guru. I am not a faith builder. I am not an all-knowing soul. I'm just like y'all, and I have a lot of learning, but I am not perfect. And that is the difference between the different things. Don't go to a promise. Don't go to somebody who's telling you your future. They might have psychic abilities, but they're still not you. And they still can't verify what you can verify for yourself. Right. Period. If you're psychic, you can figure it out. Period. If you're intelligent, you can figure it out for yourself. If you're in touch with your higher consciousness, oh, yes, ma'am, you are. Yes, sir. You will figure it out. But all the crap that's going around this planet right now being told to you, empirically yeah. told to you, is BS, misinformation, and oh my God, stop You know, listening. there's such a longing to answer a simple question. Why are we here? What is our purpose? And it, that that's, longing, you know, you've been told to think that way. That is not true. You want to know why we're here? Simply, if you sit down and think about it, I'm here. You have to ask, ask yourself to be in reality at that point, okay? Don't ask the question because you're not in reality if you're asking. That's a form of delusion. I'm here. I'm me. I'm thinking for myself right now, this second, okay? Get to that point where you know you are you, all right? And then think about, look around you, and what is it you're doing here? What is it that, that you're experiencing? Uh, how, how are all these experiences affecting me? And what good are they except for how I perceive them, understand them, and respond to them? That's how you should be thinking. And then when you start thinking that way, you wake up, the light bulb goes off and you go, oh, I'm here to learn. I'm here for a purpose. I have reason. I am doing something. And the answers to that fall very quickly on you and you realize, okay, all right, I get it. And then you move on and you go to your purpose after that. But if you're constantly saying, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? You're not listening to the answer and right. it's within you. Oh gosh, that's such a good point. Okay. That's such a good point. I've also had people question um, the voice inside your head. So like you hear yourself thinking, right. people want to know, is that you? Is that your consciousness? What What is that voice, that inner no, voice? That's your physical mind rattling on. And uh, one of the ways that you connect to your consciousness, to your, to your psychic ability oh. is to tell your physical mind to shut up. Yeah, to quiet it down, okay. right? Yeah. Quick, you go blank. You let this mind, the physical mind that is you, because it's learning things. It doesn't have all the information, okay? This does, your consciousness. And you have to shut up so you can hear it talk to you. That's why meditation is so important, because you have yes. to go within to go without. And uh, yes. being quiet and letting go of all of this, yeah. let you finally get it. And you will download so fast from your consciousness. You won't oh, my goodness. Will. How often yeah. do you meditate, Dolly? Do you do it daily? And yes. uh, Probably Absolutely. constantly, all the time. I'm sort of wide open, wide awake now. Um, so I, I am fully in contact with my consciousness. I'm speaking to you from there. Um, my physical mind doesn't worry about anything because of that. Um, I've let go of all of that. So I am in concert with myself. Okay. Duality. I'm not duality. I'm a singularity now. I hear myself. I'm speaking to you from there. That it has nothing to do with channeling or anything like that. I'm just me. I'm who I am. Wide open, wide awake, and psychic. Um, 
it is important that you all be able to get there. Now, when I get uh, too much input from around me, I will deliberately shut it down mm. and I will meditate to focus back to myself because I can be distracted. Everybody can be. Your physical mind is capable of being, I mean, if you're in pain or somebody's yanking on you or doing something stupid or throwing things at you ah. or screaming at you or whatever, you know, life happens. That's, that's the challenge we have while we're here is how we respond to that, which challenges us physically mm. and, and work on the spirituality part of ourselves at the same time, you know? Buddha had a really good thing. If it's that bad, let it go. Absolutely. <laughs> Imagine it's in the palm of your hand, ball your hand up and then turn it over and go, whoop, let it go. It's not that important. It doesn't matter. You can't take anything with you from here except right. love, how yeah. you learn to love and how you greeted love and how you practiced love and how you managed love and how you taught love. Okay. That's what you can take. That's the lessons you learn from that. You can also take wisdom with you. Wisdom is hard won. In other words, it's not easy to get wise. Wisdom is comes from a few different sources. One of them is knowledge. One of them is experience. Right. One of them is perceiving what that is and then employing what that means. Once I learn something, I'm not good at it yet. I have to employ that ability or that knowledge. Then I become wise. Because in the employing of it, I understand all of its working, period. And those are things that you must do to get wise. Okay. Absolutely. I think all it right. all starts with intention. You know, like, yes. like I, get, I get up every day and I just set forth a, a good intention for the day. And I notice that it makes a tremendous difference in the outcome right. of my day. Right. I, 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 I don't set singular intentions. Sometimes that can foil, foible you. Um, what I do is um, I set, I build a platform for myself every day, an emotional platform. Today, I'm going to work on three things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work on how I respond. I'm going to pay attention to my responses of anything that comes in my way. And I'm going to learn from them. Those are my three basic oh, intentions. Nice. I love that. so that's my foundation. Okay. And then I go from there today. I'm going to accomplish this. This is my goal for today. My intentions are already there. Now this is my goal. And I proceed. I go forward. I know all that is knowable about today. And then I move forward. Now we got stuff, slings and arrows coming at us. And that's part of the base of your intentions because I'm going to respond to them appropriately so that they right. do not knock me over or throw me down into the dirt. Oh, okay. that's brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Let's talk about before you go, and I appreciate you staying past the hour. Okay. Um, these ETs, do they, because I know people are going to want to know, do they still communicate with you? Do you still yeah. visit with them? Tell us quickly about what, where you are currently, what's happening. I'm not physically in their presence right now. I am locked here with y'all. They have left. I have no physical way to get to them or them to me. But I am psychic and I'm used to my uh, contact with them. It's so natural that I, I'm in communication with Tara and Mama and a few other people. Okay. I also hear uh, the, the um, ebb and flow of information going across time and space in the universe. Okay. It comes at me. I'm also in contact with everybody on this planet, I can hear trends. I can hear emotional stuff. I can sense um, when things are coming at me. I can sense when bad things are happening or even good things. I got all of that. And so I, I either turn the radio down or I turn it up. It just depends on who I'm tuning into and or not. Talada has the ability to contact me at will. Mama has the ability and two of my friends on the other side there. And um, when they do, I am instantly mentally in their presence and I'm in communication with them. It's not like channeling. They're not indwelling my body. They're not taking over my brain or anything. I hear them. It's like a telephone call. Sometimes I can remote view to them and see them that way and they see me. That's sometimes I employ that. And then sometimes I uh, allow myself to OBE and I can OBE to their presence. They can OBE as well. There's an area where we all go together and OBE, and I can meet up with them spiritually that way. So there's three different channels for me to go to, or three different, three different experiences that I can have with them and stay in contact. It's not really a channel. It's an experience, how you experience it. So, 
So your OBs, um, which are out-of-body experiences for folks that don't know, um, do these take place at night during your sleep or do any you time of the day? Oh. I can remote view while I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's not hard for me. I'm very good at it. I've employed yeah. it for so long in my life that I can OB anywhere. I can have a simultaneous conversation with somebody else while I'm talking to you. Um, OBE is a little bit different. OBE is I have to take my body processes down to a, to a minimum level. Okay. I have to relax and I have to be able to escape the physical body right. and get out. Um, I'm connected to it. Okay. There's a connection there and it never stops until I die, but yeah, I can leave. And I have, I do it in a private place. I don't stick myself. I don't hang out the window and do it because that that's not okay. It's a very vulnerable moment. And so I pick and choose my times carefully when I OBE. And it's generally at night. Sometimes it's during the day. It just depends on if there's anybody physically around me or not. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just read Preston's book on out of body experiences. It was just cool. amazing. There's a little genius when it comes to this stuff. I do this oh. naturally. I never realized that it can be taught. I just, you know, I, I thought to start teaching people and I thought, oh my God, I have no frame of reference for this. Uh, how am I going to do this? Because you're not going to understand anything I try to tell you about it. And then I met Preston and he's like giving me, he's giving me the how to's and wherefores of it. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then he said, read James Moreau. I did that. And that guy was a genius. Yep. And then, you know, all the saints that could do it and everybody who can OBE. And I read a lot of stuff finally about it and their process, you know, how they employ it. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. This is their dead on. And Preston's very good at it. Very good at it. Yeah, he's had thousands and thousands of them. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. So I'm super excited <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, Dolly, I hope we could do this again because I still have a boatload of okay. questions for you. Okay. Um, but I, I do thank you for your time. And You're welcome. If people put questions in the comments, we I can will answer them. I always do. Yeah. I go back and read through everything. Yep. Dolly, yep. thank you I so really much. Hard. This was You're welcome. very much. I'm like kind of speechless at, at a lot of what you said because it resonated just truth to me. There you go. Well, it's not well, you like I said, intuitively, you, I wouldn't use resonate. Resonate's not a good word. No, I would just why say is that? you felt it, you understood it. You know, Why is resonate? Resonate means that you are in the same uh, spectrum or the same, you're hearing the same sound at the same time, but you don't know the truth of it or not. Okay. Resonates not, it, you're just all vibrating at the same time. If we're holding the same beam together and we bang it and we feel it vibrating, that's resonating together. Okay. Not the same thing. But if you hear a truth and you intuitively, your psychic self, your consciousness goes, yeah, listen, listen, this is it. And shows it to you while you're hearing it. That's a big heads up that you're using your intuition and it's talking to you. And it yes. usually talks to you in your chest. You feel it before yes, you absolutely. Before understand it. You know, because I'll tell you a secret. Your consciousness yeah. is not inside your brain. It's inside your chest. Where your heart I is, hear that's that. the first electrical impulse that could, when you come together, egg and sperm, and that's where it resides. Your consciousness is indwelling your heart. Your heart's a special organ for that. And so you'll feel it. That's why we feel things in our heart. It's because your consciousness is going, yep, there it is. You know, right. so, so, you know, we have been taught so many words to use that are not, but, but it's our only way of expressing Right. And it's okay. And then when I hear people talking like that, I just say, well, you might want to try to look yeah, this way like more. That. And well, then think about it this I, way. You know, help what yourself word here. Would, would I use in place of resonate? Because I use that a lot because things resonate. And to me, it means like I did. Intuition. It's your psychic intuition. intuition. Your okay. heart's telling you it's true. Gotcha. The intuitive heart knows the truth. And when it hears it, it expresses it to you. It's your intuition. So just it's an intuitive thing that you, yes. I like that so much better. And I got to ask you this before you go. Okay. The Mandela effect, everybody all over the internet is obsessed with this. Yeah, the government's taught you that it is a psyop. Don't do it because you're messed with every single day that way. Hell, AI messes with you every day and you don't even know it. Like if you're online and it says, if you do this, you could win a prize. But if you got to play the game first, 
right. please consider whether that's a good idea or not, because you're teaching AI when you do that. It's, it's testing you. It's learning right. everything that you know, and it's trying to figure out so that it can get you later on. It is oh. smart and it's becoming smarter every day. Oh, yeah. Because we're playing into its intelligence. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, can't wait to talk to you again. This has been riveting. Thank you so much, Dolly. You're welcome. I'll be in touch with you soon. Okay. Okay. doke. Namaste. Thank you. Okay. Namaste. Bye-bye. <laughs>